Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Nathan and I'm a medical student in Chicago, Illinois. Today, MedEd shorts are back. We're going to be learning about differential diagnosis for facial paralysis. All right, let's get to it. Okay, everyone, differential diagnosis for facial paralysis. Let's get started. So first, I want to explain what is a differential diagnosis for those that may be unfamiliar with the term. So essentially, by differential diagnosis, we mean a list of possible diseases or explanations for a patient's symptoms. So say a patient comes into the clinic or the hospital um, with whatever uh, concern or symptom they might have. And then we're thinking through a differential in terms of what's the disease or condition that could explain this. So we construct this differential based on history, physical exam, labs, and imaging. And we might not have all of this data at the time when we're making the differential. So the differential can change over time as we get more data and more information. And lastly, the differential diagnosis is going to be prioritized. So some things will be higher up on the differential and some things will be lower down based on how the history, physical exam, et cetera, fit with uh, different diseases and conditions, right? So for facial paralysis, uh, this is sort of a general overview. We'll get into, break it down and go more slowly in the next slide, but I wanna give you a broad overview to start. So by facial paralysis, what we mean is that uh, the facial muscles are not working. So we don't have facial expression, uh, either in some parts of the face or the whole face. Um, so most of these diagnoses will, are going to be made based on history, but sometimes we might use imaging like CT or MRI uh, as well. So one category we have is idiopathic, and this means sort of an unknown cause. And that is when we would diagnose conditions like Bell's palsy or Ramsey Hunt syndrome. So I'm gonna be using abbreviations uh, in this slide and the next, but I will define these in the description below this video. If you're unfamiliar with them, you can refer there, uh, but I'm using some abbreviations just to keep these slides a bit cleaner. Uh, so anyways, another category to think about is infectious causes. So things like Lyme disease or otitis media. So that's a ear infection. Uh, also tumors, developmental, uh, could be from some sort of trauma, like a blunt force injury or a forceps injury, uh, like when a baby is being born. Uh, and it can also be iatrogenic, so being caused in the hospital, uh, for example, uh, post-surgical. Okay. So now let's break it down more slowly. Say a patient comes into your clinic with facial paralysis. Um, what are the things we're gonna be thinking through? How are we gonna construct a differential? That's what we're about to go through. So first, maybe we're worried about infection as the cause for the facial paralysis. Maybe the patient has a fever. Um, for whatever reason, you're concerned about infection. So maybe the patient has a history of tick exposure. Maybe they are recently hiking in the woods. Uh, so we could maybe run a labs. Uh, test serology. Uh, and if that comes back positive, uh, essentially what we're testing for here is the presence of the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. Um, you know, this would lead us to diagnose Lyme disease as the cause. But maybe the patient has a history of herpes zoster virus, HZV, uh, and they also have this painful blistering rash uh, on the face. In that case, we could diagnose Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. RHS as the cause. Okay, but maybe the patient has a gradual onset of this facial paralysis over quite a period of time. If the patient is also having ear pain, then maybe the cause of acute otitis media, uh, this ear infection that has caused subsequent damage to the facial nerve leading to this facial paralysis. But another cause to also think about with a gradual onset is potentially a tumor. 
okay, maybe the patient has bilateral facial paralysis. Some conditions to think about in that case would be sarcoidosis, uh, as well as Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS. Now, maybe the upon interviewing, you find out that the patient has a history of recent injury uh, or maybe recent surgery uh, to the face, and this could have caused damage to the facial nerve. Then we would explain the facial paralysis uh, as being due to some sort of trauma or iatrogenic. Now, if this facial process was present from birth, then we would uh, say it's some sort of developmental cause. Now, this is pretty important. You want to look to see whether the forehead is being spared. Then we would be thinking about more central causes. Uh, so that's referring to the central nervous system. And so some things we would think about are MS, multiple sclerosis, uh, maybe a stroke, uh, or maybe a tumor in the brain. All right, but maybe none of these, uh, none of this history, none of this clinical presentation applies to our patient, then we would think about Bell's palsy. It's kind of a diagnosis of exclusion, uh, but some specific characteristics with Bell's palsy would be unilateral paralysis and also acute onset, so pretty rapidly over a couple of days. Uh, that would we have to diagnose Bell's palsy as the cause. So hopefully this gives you a general overview and helpful way to think about a patient with facial paralysis. These are my references if you'd like to go and learn more. Thank you for joining today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Take care, everyone, and I will see you in the next one.